halftime viewer buying Occidental Petroleum today after those shares have more than doubled this year. Hightower's Stephanie Link also owns that stock and sees even more upside ahead. They have very good assets, very strong free cash flow, uh, $3.1 billion in the most recent quarter. They're paying down debt. I think they're going to increase the dividend. It trades at uh, six times earnings, and you have Warren Buffett in there as well, uh, owning a big chunk of it. So I would stick with this one. All right, that's Stephanie Lincoln. Despite oil prices turning flat for the year, the outlook for the energy complex, too good to resist. That, according to famed commodities trader Mark Fisher, here's what he said to us yesterday in OT. I hate picking bottoms because, you know, picking bottoms or picking tops is usually where you get yourself into trouble. But was, today was too irresistible because I think the setup was too good. So we, we kind of bought everything today on the close. We bought crude, heating oil, Arbob. I'm sure we bought some natural gas. We bought everything today. It just, again, you, you know, you, typically you go broke buying bottoms and trying to pick a bottom. But today the setup was just too good for us. All right. That was Mark Fisher, Joe Terranova back here on set. Too good to pass up. That's uh, one of the keys. Our, our viewers, we said, um, bought Oxy. People are still looking for opportunity in that space. Should they be? Yes, they should be. Only, the only reason that you would not be is if you believe that this is once again another boom-bust cycle for commodities, like we've seen in prior cycles. But based on all of the supply trends, based on the demand trends, based on the possibility that China will see a reopening in 2023, we understand that that imbalance still dictates being invested in energy. And the only area, the only economic effect, the only economic reasoning not to be invested in energy is the hard landing thesis. What's better to invest in in energy now? Oil-related stocks, not gas-related stocks, something else altogether. Okay, so understand with natural gas, there's a high degree of volatility, and there's also the seasonal effect. So well, weather's your friend I, right now. It is, but weather can also punish you greatly tomorrow. Let's understand that I've seen that. I've seen the warm weather descend upon the lower 48 in the middle of January, and your natural gas is down 12%. So I like the low beta exposure. The way that I'm personally playing it is through EOG. You're seeing consistent revenue growth there on the oil side, I support uh, Stephanie with her investment in Oxy. That's a good one. It's got the stamp of approval from Warren Buffett. From Warren Buffett, it also has a six percent short interest. And something else to keep in mind with energy and the pricing of oil, um, it's pretty compelling to understand how short, yes, short, the overall managed futures market is for the price of oil. It's got the 200-day moving average. We talk about it all the time on the network. Some people think it doesn't work. Other people think it uh, does work. But it's relevant because everyone's looking at it. Well, the 200-day moving average in oil, it's $96. The price of oil right now is 75 The 50-day is 83 The 100-day is 86 So you have a lot of the CTAs that are short oil. Beyond DOG, like PXD, obviously Chevron and ExxonMobil, on a lower dollar, they're going to continue to work because of their limited U.S. exposure. Um, high short interest, Diamondback, that's a 6% high short interest stock. And then Valero, that's a name that I own as a refiner. As the price of oil goes lower, that does benefit refiners. All right, Joe, thank you.